have a few objectives for today's lesson on pests and beneficials. By the end of these videos that you watch, you should be able to generally tell us what a beneficial is in the garden and what a pest is in the garden. When you can think about the beneficials, you want to be able to classify them into four groups. There are four good peas, predators, pollinators, parasitoids, and poopers, also called decomposers. We will ask you to name examples of pests that you can find in the garden and explain why they are a pest. That is the one bad pea, pests. Pests are anything that destroy your crops and garden harvest. They can also spread viruses and disease to both plants and people and animals. You will also learn about IPM strategies, integrated pest management. These are practices that we in Santa Clara County Master Gardeners recommend doing. It helps to avoid the use of chemical sprays. There are seven strategies. We hope you will be able to name most of them and practice them in your home. Plant to attract, hand pick, squish, stomp, spray with a hose, trap, and spray with soapy water. Those are our objectives for you in these upcoming lessons on beneficials and pests. Good morning. This is Alice and I'm Pam. We are Santa Clara County Master Gardeners and Master Composters. Normally we host our school and homeschooler group field trips at Marshall Cottle Park here in South San Jose. But since the pandemic and safety measures, we are now bringing our lessons to you on YouTube videos. We hope you enjoy this video about beneficials and pests. First, we're going to talk about beneficial insects in the garden. I want you to remember that there are four good peas out in your garden. Those good peas are predators, pollinators, parasitoids, and poopers. Grown-ups have a fancy word for poopers. They're called decomposers. I'm gonna to talk to you about predators in the garden. The predators actually chomp and chew the harmful insects that will eat your plants. So this predator, although it looks big in this picture, is quite small. This little alligator looking thing is a ladybug larva. They are voracious eaters of harmful insects. Their favorite insect is an aphid. They can eat their body weight in aphids every day. The grown up ladybug or ladybird beetle eats over 50 aphids each day. So that's a wonderful thing to have in your garden. Right here, we have a ground beetle. Now some insects in the garden do more than one job. Ground beetles are both a predator coming out at night and eating the insects that are harmful. They also decompose those same insects and plant matter that they consume. The next one is a lace wing. They're very tiny and they have a very clever trick. Not only do they eat the harmful insects, they lay their eggs right where all those harmful insects are. So when the insects hatch, there they are in the kitchen and their meal is ready for them. The next insect is a praying mantis. Praying mantis use their front two legs like arms and they catch their insects and chomp them up. And at the bottom, we have a dragonfly. Dragonflies are amazing. They come in so many different colors. And a dragonfly has the ability to unlock its jaw so it looks like a basket and fly through the air and catch flying insects. They catch a lot of mosquitoes that way and you need to thank the dragonflies for eating those mosquitoes so they're not around to bite you. Our next P is P for pollinators. Pollinators are kind of the more delicate, fragile creatures in the garden. They're, they're the good guys that most of us know about. We have a beautiful monarch butterfly here. It sips nectar and gets pollen on it while it's sipping its nectar that helps to pollinate flowers as it flies from group to group. Here we have the night shift. This is a moth. You might not have known that pollinators take place in the evening 
or into the night, but that's the job of this moth, to pollinate night flowering plants. Here's one I think you'll probably all know, the honeybee. This hardworking honeybee does all kinds of wonderful things, collecting both nectar and pollen, taking it back to its hive to start the cycle of life again by using those to feed its infants. Here is a big yellow-faced bumblebee. The yellow-faced bumblebee is another good pollinator in the garden. He can have pollen, or she, can have pollen all over as they go from plant to plant, sipping their nectar and collecting and repollinating. This little guy is very small. You may not see it, you just may see it as a blur. It's a little hoverfly or a flower fly. They're very small, but they're very, very good pollinators. Here's a fly that does, another fly that does pollination. It's a tachnid fly. He's also a, paras a parasitoid. The differences between the fly and the bee is the number of wings they have. There's just two wings on the flies, and the bee has four. They fold it all together there. Our third P is parasitoids. That's a fancy word that means the beneficial insect lays its eggs in the larva of a harmful insect. So at the top, we have a parasitic wasp that's actually depositing eggs on that caterpillar that is busy eating the plants. The second picture is a hornworm on a tomato plant. And you can see all the eggs that a parasitic wasp or fly has laid on that caterpillar. The eggs will hatch and dine on that caterpillar, making it the end of that caterpillar's life. This is a tachydid fly. They also pollinate and lay eggs on harmful insect larva. So we've had three Ps so far, predators, pollinators, and parasitoids. And the bottom are the poopers. What was that fancy name for poopers? Oh, hmm. Decomposers. Decomposers. So first we have the earthworm. The earthworm is the star of the poopers. It consumes all this decaying matter and poops out wonderful humus soil. The next one is a dung beetle. This beetle actually collects all the poop and helps decompose it. And then the bottom is a pill bug, who is also a wonderful pooper. You want to see all these things, not only in your soils and your garden, but you want to see them in your compost bin. You know that they're working to enrich the soil for better gardening. So let's remember what the four good peas are in the garden. Say them with me. Predators, pollinators, parasitoids, and poopers. And what was the fancy name for poopers? Decomposers. We've talked about the four good peas of beneficial insects in the garden, but there are more predators in the garden and critters that do things to help control pests. In our first category, we have spiders. The fancy name for spiders, arachnids. Spiders can be classified differently from insects very easily by counting the number of legs. All insects have six legs, all spiders have eight legs. There are many different kinds of spiders and they trap and kill insects in different ways. You may not know that a hummingbird is not only a pollinator, but a predator. So it's got two of the peas. They eat insects in addition to sipping the nectar and spreading pollen as they're into the flowers. And here's a pair of bluebirds. Bluebirds catch insects and they're very good at catching larvae to be feeding to their babies. Here's a bird of prey, a beautiful hawk. Here's an egret, and this egret happens to be eating a lizard. Lizards are good guys in the garden too, but sometimes, you know, dual purpose eating. And here we have a gorgeous eagle. This picture is kind of tough to see, but within this bark, there's a killdeer, and they are ground um, feeders, and they eat lots of the insects and things on the ground. They also nest on the ground. And here's some more of the cleanup crew, the scavengers, the turkey buzzard. They come and they eat the dead, dead animals and help make sure that the um, 
planet gets cleaned and recycled. The next category, frogs and toads. So here's a frog at the top and a toad at the bottom. Fancy word, amphibians. So frogs and toads especially love slugs and snails, which are real garden pests for everybody. And along with that, they eat many harmful insects. And here we have some reptiles. We have the Western fence lizard, so many times called a blue belly lizard. He's a great eater of insects in the garden. I love having them in my garden. And this guy is called a gopher snake. He not only eats gophers, but he eats other small mammals like mice, rats, and ground squirrels. He is a great help in the garden. And we have some mammals down here additionally. This one you might want to give some extra space to, but he's a good guy. He's a skunk. Skunks eat all kinds of ground-dwelling insects. They eat slugs and snails. They eat grubs, which are the larvae of beetles. Our flying friend here is a bat. He's part of the mosquito patrol, like the dragonflies, keeping those from biting us. And this wonderful mama possum here with all of her babies on the back, she loves the snails and slugs too. So she's a help, and she's, she and the, the three of these are more of the night crew. So we have just talked about four good peas that you can find in your garden. We've talked about pollinators, we've talked about predators, we've talked about parasitoids, and we've talked about poopers for good peas, but there is one bad pea category, and that is pests. There are many different kinds of pests in your garden. I'm going to talk about a few of those insect pests. Probably the most famous one are these aphids. Aphids come in different colors, and they suck the plant juice out of your plants and kill your plants. You can find them especially on roses if you see someone's rose bush. The next guy you'll find hopping around, it's a grasshopper. They love to eat your plants. And then these next two are both cucumber beetles. They're all over your squash and cucumber leaves. We have a spotted cucumber beetle and a striped cucumber beetle. You really don't want those in your garden. You need to get rid of them. Now here is perhaps one of the biggest pest insects you're going to find in your garden. This is a fig eater beetle. You may have seen them flying around. They kind of slowly and loudly buzz around you and you go, what is that? Well, that's a fig eater beetle. Now they eat both decaying, dead, kind of rotting fruit, which is okay, but they also can eat your good fruit and that's not okay. So we put them in the pest category. More of the pests we have is an earwig. You might have noticed these guys. They appear kind of mean and pincher bugs is, is another term for them. They tend to come out at night and they can just mow down seedlings when they're just sprouting. This one we have is a pest both inside and out. It's a house fly. You don't really want him laying his egg, her laying her eggs. That's maggots you can see that'll be in your compost or decaying fruits and vegetables. The next three are what are called vectors. Vectors are carriers of disease for people. This is a deer tick. It carries Lyme's disease. So you don't want that guy around. Then you all know the mosquito. He carries a number of different diseases and they just plain hurt anyway. Don't like that itch. And the cockroach. You don't want those guys anywhere close to you. The next category of pests are slugs and snails. Everything in science has a fancy word. The fancy word for slugs and snails is gastropods. Now, the mostly they'll come out when it's moisture in the evening and nighttime hours. And those are things that you can go out and just get out of your garden or you can trap them. So a slug is a critter without a shell and a snail carries that shell with him. Now, mostly we've spoken of insects. We're going to talk a few other pests here in the garden that are mammals. We have three of them. This is the ground squirrel. This one's a problem in that it digs holes, which we can fall in and trip on. But as it's digging the holes into the ground, it's also disturbing the roots and can cause death to the plant because the plant's not getting the nutrients it needs 
as the roots are disturbed. This cute little bunny rabbit does some of those holes as well and loves to munch on the tender new growth on plants. So cute, yes, problem still, pest. This guy is a gopher. Now, with the amount of territory gophers cover, you'd think there's lots of them. They are solitary creatures, but they eat the roots off the bottom of your plants as well. I had the experience in my garden where I watched him pull down a tomato plant bit by bit as it disappeared into his hole one day. Definitely a pest. So let's take a moment to review what we've already covered. There are four good peas and one bad pea in your garden. The four good peas are predators, predators pollinators, pollinators, parasitoids, parasitoids and, and poopers. poopers. The one bad pea, pests. pests. 